In this video, we'll review how to graph sine functions in radians. If you wish to see how to graph sine in degrees, that was a separate video. Recall our work with the Ferris wheel that we always use sine to measure the height of the rider as he or she turns around the ride. If we start the rider on the extreme right-hand side position, this will be called the standard position, or the positive x-axis. They will then rotate in a counterclockwise direction because that is a positive angle of revolution. If they start at the extreme right-hand side, their height would be the same as the center height of the Ferris wheel. We'll refer to that as center height. From that position, they're going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction to the top of the Ferris wheel. At the top of the Ferris wheel, they've hit their maximum height. They're going to rotate now to the extreme left-hand side, which would be the same as the center height again. From that position, they'll rotate to the bottom, which would be their minimum height. And from there, they'll rotate back to where they started, which is back to the right-hand side, or their center height. This means that their height, or the sine graph, would go from center to max, to center, to min, and back to center when it completes one complete period, or cycle. Now the function form of a sine graph, this is the general form, f of x equals a sine quantity bx plus k, where a is the amplitude, b is the frequency, and k is the vertical shift. Keeping in mind frequency is what changes the period of the sine graph, where a high frequency graph will have a short period, and a low frequency graph will have a longer period. The period can be found by taking 2 pi and dividing by the frequency, b, or the frequency, b, can be found by taking 2 pi and dividing by the period, keeping in mind that the period times the frequency, or bp, will always be equal to 2 pi in radians. Now, if you wish to see how to do horizontal or phase shifts, those are a separate video. Now, let's look at two sine graphs that we're going to do. The first function, f of x equals 2 sine of x. The amplitude here is 2, the frequency is 1, which means the period is 2 pi divided by 1, 2 pi. There is no vertical shift because nothing is added outside of the sine, so k is 0. When we go to scale this, we're going to say the full cycle, or the fourth tick, is 2 pi. Half of 2 pi would be pi, so the second tick, or half cycle, is going to be pi, and then half of pi, or a quarter cycle, is going to be pi over 2. Or we could take 2 pi and divide by 4 at the beginning. 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. Now, scaling out the rest of the marks, we're going to count by pi over 2s. We got 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 is the same as pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2 is 3 pi, and so on. All the way out to 4 pi, which is 2 complete cycles. For the vertical scaling, we need to have the center at 0. The maximum would be 2 units above that, which would be at y equals 2, and the minimum would be 2 units below that, y equals negative 2. So this sine graph is going to go from center to maximum to center to minimum, and back to center when we go to 2 pi. This is one complete period. Now typically I go two periods, so I'm going to repeat. So from center to max to center to min, and back to center at 4 pi. And then we can draw the curve. For the second example, the amplitude is 3. The vertical shift has a k value of negative 1. The period is going to have to be found by using 2 pi divided by the frequency. Well, if the frequency is 1, 2 pi divided by 1 is just 2 pi. The fourth tick is therefore going to be 2 pi. That is a complete cycle. Half of 2 pi, or half cycle, is going to be pi, and so on. For the vertical scaling, the k value is going to be our center. The center is negative 1. Because this thing has an amplitude of 3, we need to go 3 units above to find the max. Negative 1 plus 3 gives me a max value of 2, and negative 1 minus 3 tells me the minimum value is going to be negative 4. The center, negative 1, is where we start. We're going to go 3 units above, which means at pi over 2, our maximum value is going to be 2. So we go from center, to max, to center, to min, to center. And that's one complete period. To do two periods, we repeat the process. We go from center, to max, to center, to min, and back to center. And then draw the curve. That's two complete periods. Now here's two more examples. Why don't you go ahead and try these? Pause the video, and then when you're ready, resume the video to check your work. I'll give you a moment. Alright, hopefully you've had a chance to work these problems out. They are a little bit more difficult than the previous. For number three, the amplitude is just one. The frequency, well, this thing says x divided by two. Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. So the frequency is one half. The period is two pi divided by a half. 2 pi divided by a half is the same, in, same as saying, taking 2 pi and multiplying by 2. 
2 pi times 2 would be 4 pi. Which is why the fourth tick, or the complete cycle, is going to be 4 pi. As far as vertical scaling, the center is going to be at 2, and we need to go two units above, or sorry, one unit above, amplitude is only 1, which would be 2 plus 1 is 3, and then one unit below the center, 2 minus 1 is 1. So this thing will have a minimum value at 1, a center at 2, and a maximum value at 3, because the vertical shift is 2. So here's our vertical shift, and that's where we're going to start the graph. We then, because it's positive sign, go from center to max to center to min, and then back to center, that being one complete period. To do two periods, we take the center and repeat from center to max to center to min and back to center. Now number four is a negative sine graph. That's going to go center and then min. So the amplitude is four, the vertical shift is negative one, the frequency is three, which means the period is 2 pi divided by 3. That just means the fourth tick, or the complete cycle, will be at 2 pi over 3. Half of 2 pi over 3 would be 1 pi over 3, so that would be the second tick, or the half um, cycle. So every other mark starting there would be 1 pi over 3 more. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 is pi, and then 4 pi over 3. For the vertical scale, I'm going to put the minimum values I need. The center is my negative 1. My amplitude is 4, which means I'm going to be 4 units above that. Negative 1 plus 4 is going to be 3, and negative 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 5. So my minimum is at negative 5, my center is at negative 1, my maximum value is y equals 3. From the center, we start there, and it's negative sign. Negative sign graphs will go center, minimum, center, max, center. It still starts at center and ends at center. It just goes center, min, center, max, center. And then we repeat it for two cycles. So from center to min, to center, to max, and back to center. And then draw the curve. Thank you for watching this video, and hopefully it helped you understand how to graph sine functions in radians.